Hello and welcome to another Taekwondo lesson. Today I'm going to show you how to do a wedging block. The wedging block is usually done in stances which allow you to be full facing. It's mainly done in walking stance but it could also be done in sitting stance, parallel stance, X stance as well as many others. The blocking action is like this when you're using outer forearm. And if you remember in lesson number four, where I showed you how to do an outer forearm high side block, we practiced this action before developing the block. And this is how you do the high wedging block, where your fist will be at eye level if you're doing a high block, but you can also do this as a middle block where your fist will be at shoulder level. You start with the palms facing you, and then you twist the forearms at the end, okay, like that and allow the elbows to bend outwards by about 35 degrees. So practice this a few times, and then step forward into walking stance performing the technique. So you balance on one leg, relax your body in a neutral position, and as you come up, you cross the arms and then drop sharply as you block. So you're probably wondering which arm goes in front. And I remember somebody asking that to General Che Hong Hee, during a seminar, and this is what he answered. He said, it really doesn't matter, it's symmetrical, so you can choose. But if you're not sure, just ask your mum. I thought that was quite funny. But what I tend to do is if I've got my left leg in front, I'll start with my left arm in front and vice versa. And I think most people do it that way. But if you're in parallel stance or sitting stance, then it really doesn't matter. Okay? So practice this a few times and generate the power from the arm movements, you know, flick out with the elbow like that. Okay. So once you've done that a few times, you can practice it as a drill going forward, stepping into walking stance. The wedging block can be done with a knife hand as well. And it's very similar to doing it without a forearm, except that you open the knife hand at the end. And if you're doing a high block, the fingertips will be at eye level. And if it's a middle block, the fingertips will be at shoulder level rather than the top of the fist. But otherwise it's done in a very similar way. The starting position is almost the same. If you're doing an inner forearm wedging block, your palms will start facing down and then you twist them facing up sharply at the end. This is usually done as a middle block. So the fist will be at shoulder level. Okay. But this time you don't allow the elbows to point out with 35 degrees. You keep the elbows in. So there's not much movement from the elbows, just the forearms going outwards like that. Okay. Avoid bringing the arms too close to your chest. And it's the same when you're doing outer forearm wedging block. You keep the arms well in front of you. So there, so keep the shoulders relaxed. And practice that stepping forward, doing it both ways. Like that. And once you've got used to that, practice it as a drill, stepping forward in walking stance. This block can also be used with reverse knife hand, which is formed like this. The thumb's tucked out the way with a little gap here, and you're using this region to block with. And it's done similar to the inner forearm wedging block, but you open the hands and leave the fingertips at shoulder level, like that. The outer forearm high wedging block is a technique that's used in pattern do santo, which is what I'll be covering in the next lesson. So please join me for that, and I hope to see you then. Goodbye.